This call is being recorded. Good morning, everyone. This is the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those on Facebook, uh, welcome. Um, Those on the conference call, welcome. Let us go now to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus, our Christ, Jesus, our Savior, Jesus, our Messiah, Jesus, our friend, Jesus, our way maker, Jesus, the one that's like no other, the one that is better in anything, better than everything, just plain better. We thank you for Jesus this day, Lord. And so we pray and plead his blood over this conference call, over this recording on Facebook, and when it be shared on YouTube later, we plead the blood of Jesus. Because there's power, wonder-working power, in the precious blood of the Lamb. We ask you now, God, as we get ready to study your word, anoint afresh. Anoint afresh your speaker. Anoint afresh the Lord, your listeners. Anoint afresh everything involved with us that when we finish this lesson, We may not just be hearers of your word and receivers of your word, but that we might be doers of your word. Be true to your promise. Where two or three are gathered in your name, you said you would be in the midst. And there is power in the midst of you, God. There is purpose in the midst of you, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for being God. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Again, welcome everyone to the God in Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition. And I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy. For those that are on Facebook, seasons have changed. And it is now officially fall, even down here in Alabama. And so in the fall, the sun sits in a certain way. And I got shadows on my face right now. But by the time I get finished, the sun is going to be out the way. So those that are looking at my pretty face, hallelujah, (laughs) excuse the shadows this morning, but we're going to get into this lesson and enjoy this lesson. Our lesson today comes from Hebrews chapter 7, Hebrews chapter 7, and we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 3 and verses 18 through 28. And because that this lesson is such a deep lesson and a, and, and a, a full lesson, I, I'm not, I'm not going to go into the whole text as far as the uh, reading the whole text. When you get an opportunity, please go back and read it for yourself because it's one thing for somebody to tell you, but it's a whole nother level for you to go and read the word for yourself, experience the word for yourself, and let God communicate to you through his word, straight to your heart, to your mind and your spirit. Hallelujah. So let's begin reading our lesson. Hebrews chapter 7, 
starting at verse one down to verse three. And then we're going to skip all the way down. Oh, okay, commentary is different. I'm, I'm going to still do 18. I'm on 18 in there. My, my commentary stop, uh, stop, starts at 19B, but I want 18 in there. So let's begin reading. From the King James Version is where I'm going to start. Do I want to go New King James? Lord, say go New King James. All right, so let me grab my New King James Bible. For this, Michal Zedek, King of Solomon, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham, returned from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated king of righteousness, then also king of Solomon, meaning king of peace, without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of days, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. Now, now let's go down to verse 18 of Hebrews chapter 7. Verse 18 of Hebrews chapter 7. And it reads, For on the one hand, there is an annulling of the former commands because of its weakness and unprofitableness. For the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is the bringing of a better hope. Oh, if we was in church, I have somebody holler better, better hope, though through which we drew near to God. And and, and the Lord said, no, we in church, Y'all just can't, I can't hear y'all saying better back to me. So if you're at your home, just go and say better. <laughs> go ahead on, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 20. And inasmuch as he was not made priest without an oath, for they have become priests without an oath, but he with an oath by him who said to him, the Lord has sworn, and I will not relent. You are a priest forever, according to the, to the order of Melchizedek. By so much more, Jesus has become a surety of a better covenant. Everybody say better covenant. Better, better, better. Ooh, this better is just running throughout this thing. Also, verse 23 says, were many priests. Also, there were many priests because they were prevented by death from continuing. But he, because he continues forever, has an un unchangeable priesthood. Therefore, he is also able to save to the utmost those who come to God, those who come to God, since he always lives to make intercession for us. For was such a high priest was fitted for us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separated from sin, and has become higher than the heavens, who does not need daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sin and then for the people's, for he did it once and for all when he offered himself up for the law, Appointed points as high priest men who have weakness, but the word of the oath which came after the law appoints the son who has been perfect forever. So putting a tag on to this 
this uh, 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 Sunday school lesson, I'm going to use one word. And y'all heard me say it. That word is better. Better. That's the word. That's that's the word. That's the word for this lesson. If you don't hear nothing else I say for the rest of this lesson, when I say the name Jesus, you say better. Jesus, better. Jesus, better. Better than anything. Better than everything. He is better. And I want you to understand, it doesn't get any better than Jesus. Nothing, nobody, no place, nothing is better than Jesus. He's better because he's the best friend you could ever have. He's better because he's the best doctor that you could ever have. He's better because he can, he's the best lawyer you could ever have. He's better because he's king of kings and lord of love. He's better. He's better. He's better. He's better. So, so, so if you don't get nothing from this lesson, I want that word better to just run through your system, run in your ears, run out your lips, run down in your heart, all in your spirit, all through your body, because he is better, 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 better. Oh, hallelujah. 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 He better. He better, y'all. He's better. So so when we look at this lesson, we're going to be dwelling in better. Better is just all through this lesson. So our memory verse, our memory verse is verse 24. But Jesus, it says in the New Living Translation, but Jesus lives forever. His priesthood lasts forever. And so what the commentary wants us to do for this lesson is dwell on the fact that that, 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 that Jesus is our high priest forever, forever and ever and ever, and ever. But when I look at this lesson, I know he my high priest forever and ever. And any high priest, any preacher, any teacher, it don't make me no difference. I want to dwell on the fact that he is better. (laughs) Oh, it doesn't get any better than this. It doesn't get any better than Jesus. And so, so with that being said, the outline, the outline, oh man, I'm, I'm, I'm having, I'm having such a hard time with which direction I'm supposed to go with the outline. Some of y'all saying, well, well, Pastor Mark, you, you didn't put out, you didn't put out your normal thing on Facebook. So we don't even know what the outline is. Hey, when a man got to take care of his family and, and believe me this week, I've been taking care of family. I went as far as North Carolina to pick up my my daughter. Uh, I mean, my my daughter, but my son and his family who got stranded on the road on on Tuesday. I then went so far as almost the end of the state of Mississippi, man, end of the state of Alabama towards the Mississippi border to pick up uh, a, a a friend. I, I call them pseudo uh, New Harvest members. <laughs> all the way from Houston, Texas, was stranded in Mississippi. Then, and I had a cousin, thank my cousin Sharon for going to pick him up in Mississippi, in Tubalo, Mississippi, and bringing him to Florence, Alabama for us. So I, and that's where I picked her up. And I'm like, God is awesome. And then I traveled at the end of the week, <laughs> yesterday, all the way down to Tuskegee, uh, Alabama to be with my daughter. So I've been just rolling. So so when you hear me this morning dealing with this lesson, I didn't read the lesson, I didn't study the lesson, but I ain't get to do my normal pop, 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 pop outline. But now I do have some good three points. So let me give you my three points right off the top. The number one point is going to be priesthood. Priesthood is going to be verses one through three of, of chapter seven. 
Then we're going to look at his preeminence. Preeminence is going to be uh, 18 through 24. And then finally, we're going to look at his perfection, verses 25 and 28. Let me give them to you again. Priesthood, preeminence, and perfection. Priesthood, preeminence, and perfection. But now, that those, those points, those points uh, is deep points. Those, that's some deep stuff. That's some deep stuff when you start talking about the priesthood, the preeminence, and the perfection. But let me break this thing down from, from a child's perspective. You know, y'all know I like to teach. I like to teach from the kid's perspective on, on a lesson. I, I, I want us to understand it from a child's perspective. That's why I chose the simple title. To a child, to a young person, to someone young in the word, all you need to remember about this lesson is Jesus is better. <laughs> Hallelujah. That, that's why that's why I went so simple. He's better, 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 better. That, that's how I can just go with those. Those is the points. He's just better. Anything you can think of, he's better. So when we look at this lesson this morning, we're going to we're going to identify uh, the one who is priest for all eternity because he's forever. And then we're going to compare and contrast the priesthood of Melchizedek with the priesthood of the most high God, Jesus the Christ. And as high priest forever. And then when we walk away from this lesson, my, my goal is for us to be able to explain to a new Christian or any unbeliever the concept of priesthood and Jesus's role as priest. That, that's what I want us to get out of this lesson. When we get through, we got to be able to explain this thing called priesthood. But, but let me give you an introduction to this lesson up so, 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 so you can uh, 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 really grab a hold to it. Have you ever been in a conversation with somebody that they've asked you or you've asked them, what's better? What's better? Uh, 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 what's better? What's, what's better? What's, what, what is better? What is better? What is better? This, 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 this line when you ask somebody what's better is always followed up with at least two separate opinions. So, for instance, I might ask you, what's better? Steak or chicken? Now, 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 if you if you like Chick-fil-A's, the cows would tell you, mmm, chicken is better. <laughs> if you a sports fan, which team is better? The Cleveland Cavaliers in basketball or the Golden State Warriors? In, in football, you might be asked the question, what's the better team, the New England Patriots or, 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 or maybe my beloved New Orleans Saints? Oh, we got the World Series going on right now. Come on, somebody. Who's better, them, the, 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 the Cleveland Indians or the Chicago Cubs? Y'all see, I got my blue on. I believe it's the Chicago clubs. Yeah, I'll go. Go clubs. They hadn't been in, in the World Series since 1945. That's all my life and more. Who's better? I have arguments with my friends. What's so better? Is it is it the Android phone or the iPhone or the Google phone? I'm like I'm a, I'm I'm a iPhone person. Which computer is better? Is it better to get a Microsoft base PC or is it better to get a Mac base PC? I tell them all the time. I got them both, and I prefer my Mac over any other computer. But what I'm saying is, once you start this kind of conversation with people. You will get all kind of opinions. And, and, and so I like to ask people those kind of uh, questions because those kind of questions stir up something in folks when you ask them what's better. Don't even start talking about sweet potato pie because my mama's sweet potato pie. Better, better, better. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. See, 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 I got some of y'all thinking about that. But that's just small talk. That's just small talk. Today, today, in this lesson, the art of this lesson, he, he is hoping to show the readers. He's hoping to show us who are studying this word that Jesus of Nazareth is better than anything that we have experienced, believed, or could ever have imagined. He is better. Believe it or not, whether you believe it or not, he's still better. And so this book of Hebrews, this book of Hebrews is a letter that builds on that case that Christ is better, superior than everything. The author writes a series of, of irrational arguments rooted in the Old Testament to show this Jewish community of Christians how Jesus is the pinnacle of their hope. He's the top of their hope. He's the pinnacle of their hope. He is the fulfillment of the prophecies in the Old Testament and the one that, that, that they need for salvation and life. We were in a baptism yesterday and Lord blessed us to baptize 10 men. We, we were shooting for a baker's dozen, 13 men, but one got out and I think two other were trustees so they couldn't come because they were working at the time of the baptism. But yet another church had two other guys that had came down to be baptized and they weren't there yet. I said, oh Lord, they in the same room and I'm teaching about baptism. They, the other two men, were brought to Christ, received their salvation through the church of Christ. Church of Christ's doctrine differs from the doctrine that I follow. I don't have a problem with their doctrine. That's between them and God. But they got a very big problem with my doctrine. But I believe in the death, burial, and resurrection. I believe that Jesus saves us based on Romans 10, 9. That if we confess with our mouth, believe in our heart, that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and God raised him from the dead, you're saved. It ain't about what you do. It's about what Jesus has already done. He's the supreme. My counterparts believe that not only do you have to believe and confess in Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, but you got to be baptized. I can't argue with them. They got scripture after scripture to show that you ought to be baptized once you're saved. And I got the same scriptures. But I don't say, sal I don't say salvation is completed by baptism because my salvation was completed on the cross where Jesus hung and died. My salvation was completed when they buried him in the grave. My salvation was completed when three days later, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand, and I believe in him. That's when my salvation was completed. When I confessed him and believed in him, it was done. So, I tend to say Jesus is still better. Better than any water, better than any matter of fact, he is the greatest water. You want to be baptized? Be baptized in Jesus. 
be baptized in his death, burial, and resurrection. I'm off point, but I'm on point. <laughs> so our job, our job mm -mm -mm, is just like this writer's job. He was trying to encourage such encouragement and such arg argumentation that he was laying out was needed for that time to equip the community to face the temptation to abandon their faith or perhaps just to go through the motions of this cultural religious rituals to maintain an appearance and avoid any ostracism. Let me make it plain to you. Many of y'all are secret agents. Yeah, I said it. Folks at your job don't even know you're a Christian. Folks at your folks in your school don't even know that you believe in the Lord. Because you don't want to get ostracized. You want you you don't want to get put on blast, as the young folks say. Well, my boss at my job put me on blast. This week, he sent out a memo to the department and to all the division at NASA and told them, Pastor Mark McCoy, or Pastor Mac as they call me, or Mac is what they call me at work, will be giving the presentation on safety. Oh, hallelujah. Everybody at the place know I'm a pastor now. And praise be to God. When I did that, did that presentation, <laughs> they said, ooh, he is a pastor. <laughs> I'll tell y'all about that at another time. But so, to a certain degree, we, we can relate to this being ostracized because of our Christianity and being put under social stress. And so the readers in Hebrew those that this letter was sit, sent to, they weren't just dealing with ostracism and, 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 and social stresses. They were dealing with real retaliation. I mean, they were going to get physically killed by some people if they didn't choose to follow the Jewish ritual. And, and this writer is telling them those Jewish rituals were good, but Jesus is better. And so when we look at this book of Hebrews, we'll see where this author in chapters one through seven, this author tries to explain the rival culture authorities for the Jewish people and to show them how Jesus is better. He's better than the Jewish prophets. He's better than the angels. He's better than their greatest leader, Moses. He's better than their next greatest general, Joshua. He's better. He's better. And finally, he is better than the Israelites preached. Aaron and everybody in his family. And not only is he better that any of those priests, he's better than any of the high priests. Aaron, all the way to Caiaphas, everybody between, everybody to come, Jesus is still better. He's better. And that's what this book of Hebrews is trying to just dwell and drill into the readers. That's what I'm trying to drill into us as believers right now, that Jesus is better. So now let's look at his priesthood and see how better his priesthood is. So let's read verses one through three from chapter seven. Listen to it again from the New Living Translation. This Michalzadik was king of the city of Salem. 
and also priest of the most high. Hold on, y'all. I got to turn this heat off. It's cold in Alabama, but this heat about to drive me this morning. Let me turn my heat off. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. This thing got me going over here. I done got a little hot. <laughs> I'm on my back porch, y'all. Excuse me. And it's about, about 45, 50 degrees, but I got a heater back here and I got two heaters on. I have to turn one of them boys off. It's a little hot. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me begin reading again. Hebrews chapter uh, seven, starting at verse one. This Michalzadik was king of the city of Salem and also a priest of God's most high. When Abraham was returning home from winning a great battle against the kings, Michalzadik met him and blessed him. Then Abraham took a tenth of all he had captured in the battle and gave it to Michalzadik. Then Michalzadik means, the name, excuse, Michalzadik means king of justice and king of Solomon, uh, uh, Salem, king of Salem, Salem means king of peace. So, so that's, 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 that's the first three verses and I'm dealing with Jesus's priesthood. And so the priesthood was, was huge in the Jewish culture. The priesthood, the priesthood was just, that was the top position. To be a priest in the Jewish culture meant that you were well respected. And these priests uh, 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 descended from God's hero, Aaron, who was the biggest, the big brother of Moses. And from the tribe of Levi. So the Levitical priests were, were respected by the people as godly leaders and teachers of the law of Moses, who stood for what was right in the midst of the people. In the midst of everything, they stood up for what is right without compromise. In addition to having a godly legacy and reputation, the priest served as a served a crucial role for the people. They were the ones that were the intercessors, the intermediaries between God and man. These priests offered up sacrifices for the sins of the people in the tabernacle, and later on in the temple. From, from, from among the priests was one who was chosen as the high priest. And that high priest who would guide the nation, who would lead the people, because they believed in a theocracy. I'm going to say that again. They believed in a theocracy where God, was the leader. And they, the high priest was the one that was in authority as God's leader. But somewhere along the line, y'all know that they decided we don't like this theocracy stuff. We want a monarchy. And they asked God for a king so they could be like all the other nations. But we, that, that, that's a side note. So from among the high, from among the priests, was a high priest who guided the nation and had the sacrificial responsibilities of annually entering the most high, the most holy place. And when he went into the holy place, he offered up a sacrifice for himself and then for the people in the presence of God. Suffice to say, the high priest was very important to the Israelite society and spirituality. Hence, we can see that, that when this writer came to the point of telling them that Jesus was the, the, the better high priest, it blew 
them away. It's almost like telling somebody in our world, well, I went to, uh, 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 what's the one of them, them uh, 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 Phoenix. I went to Phoenix University. You know, that's one of them for profit universities. And my degree is from Phoenix and I got the best degree in the world. And you standing up there talking to somebody that went to Harvard or went to Oxford or went to MIT. How can you say your degree is better? Phoenix, you ain't only but 20, 30 years old. People have been going to Harvard and MIT for years and been going to, to, for, to Oxford for centuries. The whole point of it is, it didn't matter about Jesus' degree. It didn't matter where he, where he came from on this earth. It's about where he came from before his pilgrimage here on earth. And he was the most high priest and he is better than any priest. So the writer took them all the way back to before the father of our faith, Abraham, was even in position. You know what God told Abraham, Abram, come on, leave the land of earth and I'm going to take you to a land that you don't even know about, and I'm going to give that to you in that land. Come on, come on, come on. Leave your folks and all that idolatry and worshiping other God stuff and come follow me. I am the true and living God, and I'm going to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. Now, God gave Abraham that land eventually, but understand, in his journey to get to where God wanted him to get to, he had to go through some things. He had battles that he had to deal with. He had obstacles that he had to overcome. He had some internal stuff in him that God had to clean up. Oh, somebody better hear me. You want something from God? God done told you and gave you a vision of what he's going to do in your life? Don't think you ain't got to put any effort and work into this because God requires us to go through some stuff to get to a place that he wants to take us. Oh, I, I, I'm just, I just had to drop that in there for some of y'all who walk around telling me, oh, God, going to make a miracle. Yeah, he'll make a miracle. He works miracles all the time. But he also requires us who have faith in him to work because faith without works is dead. So don't be just thinking you're going to ride or bear the roses. But let me get to the text. I'm on the side note. So Melchizedek, when, 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 when Abraham had this big battle with all these other kings, Melchizedek showed up at his place after the battle to bless him. And that's what priests ought to do. We should be going around blessing people. That's why I have a thing. Be a blessing. You are blessed. So be a blessing always because we who are called by the name of the Lord, we are part of a raw priesthood. We are part of a holy nation, a chosen people. Yeah, some of us are peculiar. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but, but we're still part of the raw priesthood. So we should be a blessing to people. We shouldn't be haters. Every time you see somebody win a battle, Every time you didn't see somebody go from a test to a testimony, every time you see somebody that didn't go through a met from a mess to a message, every time you see somebody going through a trial and they end up with a triumph, every time you see somebody who has been a victim and they become victorious, you better go bless them. You better tell them, praise God, bless your soul. Why? Because you're next. You're next. So you might as well bless him. So Melchizedek showed up and blessed him. And then the scripture tells us that Abraham, that Abraham gave a tenth of the spoil from his victory to Melchizedek. Even before the Mosaic law was put in place, he gave a tenth, a tithe. So now, on a side note, any of y'all out there not tithe? Hmm. Can I talk to you for just a second? 
God gave you a dollar and you can't give him back 10 cents, but you want him to work a miracle in your life? Hmm. Let me say it another way. God gave you a dollar and you stealing 10 cents out of that dollar and then going to the one you stole from and asking him to bless you again. Man, you, 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 you got some card artists in you. <laughs> you a thief and a card artist. You better give your, you better give God what's due him. You better bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within you. And the promise is if you do that, he'll rebuke the devourer. And then he'll pour you out a blessing that you ain't going to even have room to keep. And you can't be doing this out of obligation. You can't be doing this out of grudge giving. You got to be a cheerful giver. Give from your heart knowing that God didn't already bless you with life. He woke you up this morning. God already blessed you with a roof over your head, clothes on your back, shoes on your feet, regulated your mind, regulated your heart, gave you the activities of your limbs that you can go out and work. Bless you with a job, even though you got some knuckleheads around, but he still bless you with a job or bless you with a fixed income. And you got the audacity to walk in the church and say, you're going to give an offering. Just give a tip. Man, you got to pay for the meal first before you give a tip. Oh, <laughs> Somebody should ought to say priest pastor because I know I'm stepping on somebody's feet. But it's all right. And so Abraham gave this tip. And not only did he give his tent to Melchizedek, he, 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 the scripture goes on to tell us what Melchizedek name means. His name means king of justice. So he's a king of righteousness. He's a king of justice. He's a king of what is right. And then he says, and he's also the king of Salem. So he knows what's right, but he's going to do it in peace. He's the, it, it, that means he's the king of peace. He's the king of justice, and he's the king of peace. Where there's justice, there ought to be peace. Because if you judge right, there will be peace. If you judge wrong, or your judgment is corrupt, oh, have mercy. You're going to have unrest. Oh, America, if I had time, we would get into that. But now it goes on in verse three and says, there is no record of his father or his mother or any of his ancestors, no beginning or no end of his life. He remains a priest forever, resembling the son of God. We have history about Jesus, but we have no history of Melchizedek. Where he came from, we don't know. Where he going, where he went, we don't know. But the word here says he's a priest forever. And Jesus is the same. See, we know where Jesus came from. That's some of our problem. I say, oh, he's Mary's baby. Every time I hear somebody talk about his Mary's baby, you saying that, uh, okay, he ain't had no daddy. Yeah, y'all caught that, didn't you? Yeah, he's Mary's baby but he's also God's only begotten son. So I dwell on his only begotten son. Mary was just a vessel. Oh, I'm going on. Let me take me a little sip of water. I got to be like the frog right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I know what I just said. I stepped on some people's feet with that one. So now, this, 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 this Jesus this Jesus is from the Ivy League of Melchizedek and not the diploma mill of Aaron. <laughs> In other words, 
this Jesus, he came through like Mikael's a dick. He didn't, we don't know where he came from. We don't know his beginning or his end. But he's always there. Hallelujah. And so, he's going to be a priest forever. Whereas the priest of Aaron's, Aaron's lineage, they were priests for a lifetime. And then they're no longer priests. But God chose Jesus to be a priest forever. Let's go down to verses 19, uh, 18 through 24. I know I'm running out of time, but this is my next point. Not only is he a priest, but he's preeminent. Preeminent. Verse 9, verse verse I mean, verse 18. Verse 18, it reads like this for on the one hand, there is an, an, an annulling of the former commandments because of its weakness and its unprofitability, unprofitableness. For the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is the bringing of a better hope to which we draw near to God. Verse 20. This new system was established with a solemn oath. Aaron descended, descendants became priests without such an oath. But there was an oath regarding Jesus. For God said to him, the Lord has taken an oath and will not break it, break his vow. You are a priest forever. Because of this oath, Jesus is the one who guarantees the better covenant with God. There were many priests under the old system for death prevented them from remaining in office. But Jesus but because Jesus, but because Jesus lives forever, his priesthood lives forever. It's preeminent. It means that it's going to be there forever and ever. Being a descendant of this, this certain pedigree was very important in the biblical world, in the biblical world. Hence that many general generational uh, of, of people who came throughout the Bible and we, we can look at the genealogy of everybody coming out of, of, from, from, from all the way from, from, from Adam and Eve. And then we get over to, to uh, uh, Noah and Ham, Chef and, and, and Jeff Fab. And then we see their line and then we start following uh, 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 Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And then we follow all, all of the tribes and we get all the way up to the tribe of Judah. And, and all of that, and boom, we find Jesus. We find Jesus. All that genealogy is there. You look at Aaron and all of his sons, the Levites, the tribe of Levite is there. We can see all of that. Those are the lineages. But with Mikhail's a dick, we don't have any. And Jesus, yeah. He came through like that, but he's better. He's better because God has said he is going to be a priest forever. Why? Because all the other high priests died and Jesus died too. But Jesus got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. So that makes him the permanent forever high priest just like Mikhail's did. And not only is he permanent, he was perfect. The other priests had to ask for forgiveness for their sins. Jesus didn't have any sins. He didn't have to make an offering for up for his own sin. He didn't know any sins. And he became our offering, our sacrifice. He was the perfect sacrifice. So live forever and ever and ever interceding on our behalf, sitting at the right hand of the Father. That's why in the earlier text, I think I was in chapter four, if I'm right, or, or, or that, that, or even chapter five, maybe maybe chapter four, but it says that we, we can have this confidence that we can go boldly to the throne of grace, knowing that Jesus is going to answer our prayers. 
He's preeminent. Got preeminency. He's perfect. He's better than anything else. Now, finally, my final point. Make sure I ain't, I got everything he wanted me to cover. Uh Oh, he said, now go back to verse. He says, look, read 24 and 25. He says, before you go on the, uh, uh, read 24, he says, but because Jesus lives forever, his priesthood lives forever. He says, keep that in mind. Jesus is forever. Now go to 25, verse 25 and 28 of Hebrews chapter seven. And this is to deal with his perfection. Therefore, he is able once and forever to save those who come to God through him. He, his, his, he lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. He is the kind of high priest we need because he is holy, blameless, unstained by sin. He has been set apart from sinners and has been given the high place of honor in heaven. Unlike those those other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices every day. They they did this for their own sins first and then for the sins of the people. But Jesus did this once for all when he offered himself as a sacrifice for the people's sin. The law appointed high priests who were limited by human weakness, but after the law was given, God appointed the son with an oath, and his son has been made the perfect high priest forever, forever, forever and ever and ever. He is the high priest. No sin. He didn't have to make any more sacrifices. He is the high priest. He did it once, and he did it once for all. All. That includes you. That includes me. That includes everybody here, everybody that was, and everybody to come. He did it for all. Jesus paid it all, and all to him we owe. Sin has left the crimson stain, and Jesus has washed it white as snow. Jesus, Jesus, and Jesus alone is better than anything and anybody. You need a friend? Trust Jesus. You need a doctor? Trust Jesus. You need a counselor, trust Jesus. If your mother and and father forsake you, go to Jesus. He'll stick closer to you than any friend. You need to hear a word, go to Jesus' word. He'll help you through. You need a sign, you need direction. He's a lamp onto your feet and a light unto your path. You need to be instructed and directed and guided. Go to King Jesus. He's the good shepherd. David said, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He is there. You need prayer. Call on the name of Jesus because he's sitting at the right hand of the father on the throne in heaven interceding on your behalf. And then if you don't know how to pray and what to pray for, just surrender and let Jesus' Holy Spirit pray through you with moans and groans that you can't even understand. Are you, do you need, and it's better. It's better. It's better. In conclusion, in conclusion, Jesus is higher than any leader, Abraham, Moses, Joshua, Aaron, whoever you can come up with, he's higher than any priest. He is the complete revelation of God. Surely there was no one in Abram's day, in Abraham's day, who could ever anticipate the dual role of Melchizedek as king and priest. It was just the foreshadow of the fact that Jesus 
We call him Jesus the Christ. We call him Christ Jesus. But that means the Messiah, the one the true and living God that came to save this whole entire world. Thank you, Lord, as we go down in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for that better. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus. And help us, Lord, to walk in Jesus because it doesn't get any better than this. It doesn't get any better because he is better better, better than anything that we could think of. We thank you and we praise you for sending us Jesus, the better and the best. And I encourage each and everybody as I pray this prayer, Lord, help us to see that he's better. Lord, help us to see that he is the best. And as long as we're walking with him, the best is yet to come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Before I get off of this recording, I'd like to give those who are listening an opportunity to give your life to Christ. I simply pray the prayer of salvation. Please pray this along with me. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Facebook record, Facebook folks, we're getting ready to go into overtime. Um, The number to go into overtime is 910-218. 0531 9102180531 and we will talk about the lesson and the and the word and over time I tell you the message be good God blesses us with an anointed message but over time be off the chain because the presence of the Lord just flows in over time and you get to talk you get prayed for if you need prayer So you need to come and join us on Overtime, 910-218-0531. This is Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E-Church in Harvest, Alabama. This is the Guiding Light Ministry Prayer and Bible Study, International Prayer and Bible Study. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition. I hope you were blessed. Be blessed and always be a blessing.